Assalamu alaikum and hi to everyone. Uh, today, our topic is Propel Level 7 Diploma in Strategic Health and Safety Leadership and Management. Uh, today, in today's lecture, we will cover the Unit 5 of this qualification, which is actually the last unit of this qualification. So before moving forward, I can confirm that for the first four units, already my lectures are available on this channel. First of all, in introduction to this unit, we are We are going to start on unit five and the unit number is J slash 506 slash 2048. I just want to give you a brief uh, intro or information about this number is that actually these qualifications are off -core regulated. So this is the unit number with which it is registered with off -core. So the unit name is Establish Business Risk Management Processes. So you have to uh, give consideration here uh, to the topic of this unit that it is not all about the safety risk management processes. So it is asking about or it is letting you know about the business risk management processes. In this unit, you have to consider the risk management with regard to health and safety, but the focus will remain on the business risk management processes. So you should be clear uh, as a learner, as an assessor, that you have to consider this unit as a business risk management process. So the explanation, the narration, and the evidence is provided should be related to business res business risk management instead of only covering considering the general health and safety risk management processes okay so basically the aim of this unit is to provide learner knowledge or assessing the level of knowledge a learner is having, a candidate is having with regard to business risk management processes, procedures. So he should know the uh, business risk management, uh, management processes and approach, uh, approaches. So in this unit, uh, for successful completion of this unit, a learner have to complete or pass three learning outcomes and their and their 16 assessment criteria. As you know very well that I have uh, told this in my previous lectures of Procol and Vicula 6 and level 7, that when it comes to completing a unit, it is mandatory to pass, to get the grade pass in each assessment criteria and then in each learning outcome your passing uh, your, your your passing grade should be passed and all the criteria should be met to gain that to complete that qualification to complete that unit actually and then we will move forward to the completion of qualification by completing all the units so in this unit you have three learning outcomes and then you have 16 assessment criteria. The first seven criteria are in learning outcome one and the other five criteria, assessment criteria are in learning outcome two and the last, the last four Assessment criteria are in learning outcome three. 
so as usual we are going to discuss these uh, topics these sub topics of this unit step by step so starting from the first learning outcome so once again i just want to uh, remind you that sorry i just want to remind you that you should can you have to you should consider business risk management here instead of just safety risk management okay so the first learning outcome the learner will be able what um, like for what he will be able he will be able to understand business risk management models and techniques a learner should learn and understand here business risk management models and techniques so uh, starting from the because uh, this learning outcome is composite of seven assessment criteria so i'm going to start from the first assessment criteria it is 1.1 analyze standards relating to the management of business risk here what you have to see you have to see the standards relating to business management normally organizations are having other than safety risk management system organizations are definitely having business risk management system in place because it is crucial for them to uh, for the con continuity of that business that they should have a business risk management model or business management uh, techniques or standards applied in their organization so the learner sh should have to identify first in this assessment criteria that what type of business risk management model or standards are integrated in his organization so for this one uh, every organization has tailored a risk a business risk management system in in its uh, uh, in its operations so here uh normally like they have uh, their own business risk management models there systems there but still there is definitely a you can say a root there a, a base there from some international standard so right away what we are normally having in the organization two main standards are there one is much popular there and the second one is to some extent the first one is iso uh, iso 31001 rsm risk uh, it is actually rms sorry rms risk management system the standard number is 13 uh, 31001 it is all about business risk management so normally you you will see this standard in the organization and if you are not directly uh, having this standard implemented in in your organization sometime you can see that it is integrated in the, the management system of the organization so the second one is coso and uh, or erm it is enterprise risk management it is one another uh, standard organizations are using uh, for uh, tackling for copying business risk uh, in in their organization so in the first uh, assessment criteria a learner should analyze the standards whatever he or she is having at their workplaces or in their organization whether they are having their own uh, risk 
business risk management system there and they are they are ha having integrated ISO 13 uh, 31001 or they are having e or m there in their organization so they have to give narration on that so they can produce any evidence which is confirming that their organization is having business risk management model there or business risk management system there or they can also give an evidence uh, like I, the, the, the organization, their organization has implemented ISO 13001 or E or COSOS ERM. So they can produce the evidences of that along with their narration because in the workbook, they have to give the narration, the explanation, and to support that, have to produce evidence. So these three types of evidences can be used there. So in the second one, we have 1.2, analyze the factors influencing different types of risk. Our risk normally, uh, because at this level, I don't have to actually explain you what is risk because uh, you are doing level seven qualification, but still just for a reminder, risk is equal to likelihood into consequences or severity. There are different definitions there, but definitely there are risk is equal to probability into consequences, or you can say likelihood into severity. Both of definitions can be used. But here, thing is, analyze the factors influencing different types of risk. In your organization, in, in uh, a candidate, has to identify what are the factors he has to do the analysis. He can do that analysis once the factors are identified in his organization that what are the factors which are influencing different types of risk. So normally what we, uh, we are having definitely a uh, different type of nature of organization is facing different types of factors there. But here, normally we are facing three factors. First, exposure. And second, uh, vulnerability of uh, any factor or, or risk is actually there. Then what type of hazards are there which are contributing, which are influencing different types of risk? So you have to provide a clear narration here, explanation here, what is going on or what are the factors uh, which are influencing different types of risk at your organization. To support that narration, to support that explanation, you have to provide some evidences of that. So you can provide any uh, uh, risk assessment, <laughs> sorry, risk assessment performed there. Risk management system is, uh, our risk controls are applied there. Definitely something you are having there that is confirming that what type of factors are influencing different types of risk. So to support your narration, your explanation in this purpose. So the third one is 1.3, evaluate, a relationship between risk management, business continuity, and crisis management. First of all, uh, you should know very well what is risk management. Basically, doing the business risk assessment first and identifying the existing or upcoming risk there or hazards there and to control that it's the process by controlling that with risk controlling method the complete system is actually risk management definitely whenever there is a business whenever there is a there is an organization 
working for any purpose, they need a business continuity. Because without business continuity, they can't move forward or they can't actually achieve their aims and objectives. So definitely, there is a strong relationship between risk management, business continuity, and crisis management. So what is here, the th third thing is, what is crisis management? Sorry. Basically, it is a framework for all aspects of preparing, preventing, coping, and coping to uh, controlling, actually. It means coping, not coping. So, and recovery. It is a basically infrastructure, a framework developed for preparing, preventing, coping, and recovering from any crisis. Okay? So, in this assessment criteria, candidate has to explain, give narration on the relationship, not defining each and everything. He has to give his narration, his explanation that what he has evaluated when it comes to relationship between risk management, business continuity, and crisis management. To support that narration, to support uh, that explanation, he can produce evidences in the form of a uh, form of complete business risk management model are, are planned there actually. Because in the plan, risk management, business continuity, and crisis man management, all things are definitely considered there or can be considered in that. So he has to produce such thing, such solid evidence, which is confirming that, that in his or her organization, there is a strong relationship between risk management, business con continuity, and crisis management. So he has to understand, understand that, he has to evaluate that and explain there. So moving to the 1.4, uh, evaluate a range of scenario planning and crisis management models. Actually, I, I have uh, told you about the crisis management models that they are working actually on preparing, preventing, coping and recovery of the situation, of the, of the crisis situation of the organization. So in this evaluation, a learner should know that what type of scenario planning and crisis management models he or she has in her or his organization. So he has to give a clear explanation and narration with regard to his or her organization. To support his narrative or explanation, he can produce evidences of crisis management models. He can produce uh, risk management scenario planning. So any planning which is confirming that, that organization is working on risk management, business risk management will be considered enough for this assessment criteria. So then we have other three assessment criteria for the same learning outcome. Now we are having 1.5, analyze methods of calculating risk probability. So there are different methods there. Uh, first, uh, 
uh, I am just explaining you that a learner should do the analysis at his or her workplace and identify that what methods their organization is specifically using for calculating risk probability. Okay, so if you think that what methods can be there, so there are different methods there, like risk scoring method is there, Delphi method is there, Bochy's analysis is there, sensitivity analysis is there, quantitative research, qualitative research. So such methods can be used in an organization for calculating risk probability. But the learner or candidate should consider what is going on in his or her organization. Instead of giving generic information of that, he has to give the specific organization which is conforming what is going on when it comes to uh, methods used for calculating risk probability in his or her organization. To support this narration or explanation, again, what he can do, he can provide the evidence documents which are conforming different methods of calculating risk probability in his or her organization. Now, moving forward to 1.6. Analyze the effectiveness of a range of risk monitoring technique, techniques. Basically, if he has to develop in future, or uh, he has, he or she has to uh, develop, a, uh, develop or actually uh, monitor or evaluate the effectiveness. He should know very well that what are risk monitoring techniques, because knowing or understanding the risk monitoring technique and and their effectiveness. If he's failing to understand that, then definitely he will be unable to develop and measure the effectiveness. So he should clearly know about that. So normally, what risk monitoring techniques are uh, available there will be risk audits there. There are assessing risks. There are brainstorming, there are SWOT analysis, root cause analysis. So many analyses are there available, uh, which can be used for uh, risk monitoring techniques. So first of all, learner has to identify that what risk business risk monitoring techniques are uh, imp uh, are implementing or their organization is using. Once it's identified, they have to understand the effectiveness that how they, how the risk monitoring techniques are effective in their organization. Okay, so they have to explain and give narration on effectiveness of a range of risk monitoring techniques to support their answer, to support their narration, to support their explanation, they can provide evidence of implementing implemented risk monitoring techniques in their organization along with their any effective, any, any uh, you can say any evidence of their effectiveness in their organization. So such type of evidence can be used for this specific assessment criteria 1.6. Then the last uh, assessment criteria for first learning, uh, first learner outcome 
as in this learning outcome in all these assessment criteria we are focusing on the understanding of business risk management models okay so we have 1.7 analyze the significance of risk governance structures and ownership so definitely uh, to cope with risk uh, present in, in in any business, there will be a risk governance structure there. So before moving forward, you should know that what is actually risk governance structure. It is basically a specific, a well-defined framework which denotes the responsibility, accountability for management and oversight of risk in an institution. So basically, it is denoting the responsibility and accountability of an organization with regard to risk, uh, uh, the risk which an organization or institution or an institution can face. So this is actually the structure there. Definitely, when it comes to risk governance structure, and governance is all about the responsibilities and accountability, definitely there will be some ownership. Because without making anyone accountable, responsible, you can't say that you are having our governance structure there. So, regarding this, assessment criteria 1.7 candidate should explain the risk governance structure they have in their organization how they are working and what is their significance there so they have to explain that after that to support their narration to support their explanation, they have to provide the evidences like they are having risk governance structures implemented in their organization. Definitely, it can be confirmed from any risk management model or plan there. Planning, uh, definitely a detailed plan uh, also confirming that there is a proper risk governance structures in the organization and people are Accountable, accountable and responsible for that, that is confirming the ownership of, of that uh, risk governance structure. So you have to provide that. In all these seven assessment criteria of learning outcome one for this unit five of proper level seven diploma in uh, strategic health and safety leadership management, it is discussing about the understanding. Okay, so in this first learning outcome, a learner or candidate should know all these things. He should have a clear understanding of that and what is going on in his organization with regard to these assessment criteria. He has to understand that, he has to give the explanation, narration there, and he has to provide evidences related to these assessment criteria. Now we have learning outcome two. In learning outcome two, it is be able to develop business risk management processes. As I have discussed earlier, that for developing something, or for evaluating effectiveness or measuring the performance, a person should have clear understanding and knowledge of that specific topic or thing. So here we have seen that in learning outcome one, we have discussed all about the understanding of business risk management processes and their approaches. Now, once he has the understanding, we are moving forward to development of business risk management 
processes. 2.1 is review periodically the effectiveness of risk management strategy, policy, and criteria. In this assessment criteria, a candidate has to explain, he has to give narration that in his organization, how they are reviewing periodically. What they have to, uh, what they are reviewing? Effectiveness of risk management strategy, policy, and criteria. That how well the risk management strategy, policy, and criteria is working in their organization. They have to, uh, uh, they, maybe they are conducting, uh, their organization is conducting review meetings. Maybe they are monthly, they are quarterly, they are uh, definitely at different levels. Uh, all, of you, uh, all of you should know that, uh, that on different levels, the frequency of these reviews can be differ different. Like if top management is doing that, if fine, they are doing biannually or annually. If uh, middle management is doing that, then it's monthly or quarterly, it's fine. Then it's uh, lower management is doing that, then it will be weekly, monthly, then it will be fine. So at different levels of management, the different level of management actually defines the frequency of doing or, or conducting the reviews on any matter. So in this 2.1, they have to uh, give clear picture of risk management strategy, policies, and criteria. So the actually the evidence which can be accepted here or when it comes to uh, uh, assessment for uh, assessors and for provide uh, provision of evidences for candidates, they have to produce evidence like reviews, review committee meetings, review meetings on this one. Because a risk management, a specific risk management policy or strategy will, will not be effective here or will not be relevant here. How? Because it is all, it is discussing review periodically. Here the subject is review periodically. The effectiveness of risk management strategy, policy and criteria. Because risk management strategy, policy, and criteria are object there. So they have to produce the evidences which are confirming review of a periodic review, the effectiveness, how much they are effective. So they have to produce evidence of their review meetings or review discussions or whatever, which is confirming that they have reviewed the effectiveness of risk management strategy, policy, and criteria. Now, moving forward to the 2.2, take action because it is developed. It is in the implementation phase, okay? Our practical phase. Take action to ensure that risk profiles remain current and relevant. Okay, so here they have to confirm that how they and their top management is participating to ensuring that risk profiles remain current and relevant because current and relevancy is the main factor for effectiveness of anything. So they have to provide narration on this that how their organization is working there and evidences like which are confirming that they and their organization is ensuring that risk profiles are current are and relevant. For this, whatever they are doing, they can produce any evidence of that one. Now moving to the 2.3, develop viable and affordable risk management processes that are consistent with business needs 
and the degree of potential impact of the risk. So, whatever risk management process your organization is using, you have to make sure that that risk management, when it comes to implementation, when it comes to the development, so these risk management processes should be viable and affordable, means they are practicable and they are affordable, means that organization has the potential to implement that. Otherwise, development of inaffordable or in, in, impracticable risk management processes will not work, work at all in their organization. So in this, they have to explain that, that how they and their organization is developing viable and affo uh, affordable risk management processes with regard to the business needs and the risk they are facing the potential of potential impact of that risk so they have to be aligned with that like it means that these uh, risk management processes should be viable and affordable along with that they are specific to, 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 to their organization's business needs and potential impact of the risk their organization can face. So they have to give narration and explanation on that. With this, they can provide evidences of what they have developed for uh, copying such situation, copying business needs, how, how, uh, how, so whatever they have developed, they have to produce evidences of that. Even if they are part of that uh, that operation, that development, they can still produce that evidence. And if they are in the like they are in the first day, first implementation stage of that, or they are indirect part of that, still they can produce evidence of that. Now in two point four, it is asking about develop contingency and business disruption processes that are commensurate with the degree of commensurate with the degree of risk to business as usual and organizational reputation so here one other thing is that as we are discussing the business risk management system definitely good practices are implemented there but still there is chance of crisis there is a chance of uncertain situation so that's why organization and the top management actually should develop contingencies and business disruption processes because it is much necessary, or uh, you can say, uh, vital for the business continuity. So they have to explain that what contingencies and business disruption processes or plans are there in their organization with regard to the risk their organization can face or any crisis situation, how they can cope with that. So they have to explain that. After that explanation, they have to provide evidences in the form of contingency plans they have, business disruption plans they have, and uh, crisis management plans they have. So any type of evidence can be acceptable uh, to pass this assessment criteria. Now the last, Assessment criteria of this learning outcome is take action to ensure that risk management processes are integrated into operational plans and activities.
basically whenever it comes to business the main focus the main theme of the of any business is to generate profits is to generate revenues so here top management and a candidate being a part of a top management has to ensure that that risk management processes are integrated into operational plans and activity that business is not only focusing on their operations their production on their revenues on their profit they have to consider they have to integrate these risk management processes in their all plans and activities because a, a risk can run run their operational plans and all the activities all the efforts for generating the revenue getting the profits so it is much needed thing there so they have to explain in this one that how they have ensured or their organization has ensured that risk management processes are part or integral part of operational plans and activity of their organization to support this they can provide uh, any evidence which is confirming the integration of business management processes uh, in their system okay so even even um, in, in this case in this case our risk management system iso 31 uh, 31001 uh, implementation or uh, integration can be used as evidence even the organization has implemented that that evidence can also work even they are having a specific risk management uh, risk management system policy there risk management policy there that can be used like in 2.1 we can't use that because there is 2.1 in 2.1 that specific policy is still the object not the subject here it is the subject so it is also confirming for ensuring for example you are ensuring that you are having a risk management policy there so risk management policy is confirming that that it is integrated in the business operations so it is working for them it is ensuring them that it will definitely be, all the operations and activities are considering risk management as a priority as an integral part of their plans and their activity so this was our second learning outcome we have completed with its five assessment criteria so the last learning outcome uh, which have four assessment criteria it is be able to evaluate the effectiveness be able to evaluate the effectiveness of business risk management processes so first learning outcome was that a learner a candidate should have understanding in the second one he should have skills to develop the business risk management processes and should have skills to implement that to ensure that in this third section it is focusing on the skill a candidate should have about evaluating the effectiveness what he understood what he developed what they have developed what they have implemented now he should have ability he should have the ability to evaluate the effectiveness of of business risk management processes so in the 3.1 as far as the suitability of range of risk evaluation techniques to business risk management here 
it is working. Like if you want to uh, evaluate something, definitely you should have some knowledge. You're not some uh, good knowledge of that. But definitely once you are evaluating something, it is not, uh, you can't manage it generally. You definitely have some techniques, some evaluation techniques there to evaluate there. So it is discussing that you should appraise that the what risk evaluation techniques you are using is suitable for that specific business risk management system. So it is not like that, that you are having a specific business risk management system there and your evaluation techniques are not uh, suitable to that, not relevant to that. So suitability is a point there. So here they have to explain that what evaluation techniques they are using and how it's confirming that, that these risk evaluation techniques are suitable to that business risk management system, what they have implemented in their organization. So they have to explain that. So they can provide an evidence how they are performing the risk evaluation. Once they are having the evidence of that, you can see there that how much it's suitable to that and how much it's working for that for measuring the effectiveness. In 3.2, evaluate risk using valid quantitative and qualitative information. So moving on, what was implemented, what was developed, what was understood for uh, for this purpose, for evaluation of this understanding, for evaluation of that implementation, for that risk evaluation, they should do valid quantitative, uh, they should have quantitative and qualitative information. From where it will come? It will come from quantitative risk research, from qualitative risk research, they will gather the information. They will gather the quantitative and qualitative risk information. So they have to provide evidence of that, that how they have done the research, how they have worked on that to collect qualitative and quantitative information first, and then evaluating uh, risk that these are giving, the, they are having some connection there. Okay, so they have to give narration explanation on that and evidence related to qualitative or quantitative risk research will be enough for this purpose. Then 3.3, identify areas for improvement in identifying and managing risk. Just like all the management system, always there is a chance of improvement. So, CI is always there. Continual improvement, continual or continuous improvement is always there. A chance is always there. So once you have phrased that, you have evaluated that, still things can be improved. So what you have to do, you have, to, uh, the, the, the candidate have to explain here that how they are identifying improvement areas for managing the risk, for identifying the risk. For example, sometimes what happened, uh, we work uh, before the start of work, the risk or hazards are different. During the work, it's different. So that's why sometimes you need uh, in, 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 uh, and you have to identify areas where you need improvement in identifying and managing the risk. So any such type of uh, identification, such type of assessment, subtype of identification, uh, confirmation, uh, documented evidence will be enough for 
the evidence of this 3.3 .3 assessment criteria. So in 3.4, encourage a culture that accepts and manages risk. So here it comes, the demand of a positive culture with regard to business risk management system. That it is your role, it's not even your, it's top management role to encourage a culture that accepts and manages risk. Like they are promoting a culture that is not focusing only on production services or uh, creating revenues or getting profits. A such culture in which a proper acceptance is given to the business management risk. Okay, so uh, any evidence which is confirming that top management is endorsing, is ensuring such culture can be enough for this assessment criteria. So we have completed this unit as well as we have completed all the five uh, lectures for this qualification. So here I just want to give uh, some, some tips uh, for the candidates and also for the Sessions. So first thing is that, uh, do remember learners that you don't have to produce too many evidences. You, what you only have to do, try to produce minimum 10 evidences for each unit, minimum. But the nature and type of each evidence should be different. And these evidence are relevant. Relevancy matters. Not a big number is, ma is matter. Actually, it is the relevancy of that evidences which is conforming your level of knowledge, which is conforming that the activities which are going on in your organization are conforming that you can pass this unit, yes, this qualification. Secondly, assessor should consider this, that relevancy is important. What the, actually the requirement of assessment criteria is important and what the learner has produced is important. So definitely there should be a relevancy. Without a relevancy, a lot of evidences will not work for that. Because being an a uh, lead IQ uh, in some organization for such uh, for these uh, NVQ qualifications, I have noticed that that this is a big mistake. Um, candidates are uh, doing and also assessors are doing. So just what you have to do, you have to do, you have to provide a reasonable number of evidences and make sure the nature and type of evidences are uh, different. And then your most, uh, your, uh, mo uh, m your main focus should be on the relevancy of that evidences to the set assessment criteria. Okay, so one more thing, and then I am going to close it. Relevancy matters uh, here, the means of relevancy in, uh, there are two means of relevancy there. First thing is that you are providing the relevant evidences which are relevant to specific topic. Like we are discussing here, business risk management. So relevancy should be along with that. Secondly, clearly mark there that what evidence is relevant to what assessment criteria. So you have to consider both of these points. So I hope that uh, this, uh, my, this uh, effort will uh, definitely help you out um, for candidates and as well as for the assessors. And definitely very soon I will 
uh, see you people again in any other video lecture. So thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Goodbye.